Sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you all here this morning. Uh, is anyone recording? No? Okay. All right. Uh, let's do um, review our minutes. May have the approval of the minutes. Have you all reviewed the minutes? December the 6th. Uh, the amended minutes of the 6th? Yes. I, I, I see one correction. Um, thank you for making all the other ones. But uh, on the second page, hiring, hiring a property management company, uh, it says motion by Webster, seconded by Metcalf, to accept the advisory committee's report. Ms. Webster made the motion to accept. I seconded it for discussion. I just want that noted, please. Any other corrections or concerns on the December 6th minutes? I'm going to have a motion to accept with the correction. I'll second with the corrections. We have the January 4th work, workshop minutes. Uh, any concerns or corrections to that? If not, I have a motion to accept. Okay, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Motion carried. Uh, we have the correspondence, Gail. <laughs> to whom it may concern, my 
My name is Joseph Swartz. My wife, Linda, and I recently moved into the community from Ohio. We live at 8441 Fleetway Avenue. <coughs> Linda and I have been Christians for many years, and I'm hoping to lead a Bible discussion group here at Brookridge with the approval of the board. If approved, I'd like to host this group at the community center weekly between 6 to 7 p.m., as there is an opening to do so. I'm flexible on weekdays. The purpose of the group is to give believers in Christ an opportunity to contribute as we go through the New Testament, starting in the letter to the Romans and discovering the truth of Christianity. My hope is to begin at the first of the new year. This letter represents my formal request to you for approval. Thank you for your consideration. Joseph Swartz, 8441 Fleetway Avenue. Are you making a motion, Gail? Yes, I was just checking something. I make a motion to approve a Bible discussion group on Thursday evenings from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the clubhouse for Brookridge residents, their household members, and possibly outside guests. May I have a second? Yeah, I'll second that one. Any discussion? I would like to discuss it just a little bit. Uh, I would ask Mr. Swartz, have you looked into the other groups that are already here and maybe share what you do with the group rather than creating another group? I have no problem with approving it. I'm just wondering if he's looked into those aspects before he does it. Well, um, Patrona? I might be able to answer the question. Is that okay? Come forward, Patrona, please. I ask him the same question, Leo. <laughs> and that's why I might be able to give you a little insight. He wants it to be a, like a round table discussion. He doesn't want to be the sole leader. Um, and he said, like most prayer meetings or church services, it's a sole, you know, one sole person kind of leading the group. And he wants it to be a total roundtable discussion that everyone can put into. That will be the difference in what we have now. Yeah. And it is different. Yeah. Fine, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor of uh, this new group coming on board? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion <laughs> My president's letter, rather short, I hope sweet. Um, as you all know now, Greg Schubert, captain of our security code enforcement, he has resigned. And John Lukovic, who was the uh, lieutenant, has retired. And um, as I mentioned to you at the last meeting, the 2022 audit is in the office. Our ba your balance, uh, the first balance that went out, there was a typo error. We had to call them all back and issue new ballots. It happens, we don't like it, but it does happen and we deal with it. And I wanna be sure that you all review your bills, sign them, and turn them in at the office. I'm still working on the uh, two-book problem, and I want you all to remember, this issue didn't happen overnight, so it's not going to resolve itself overnight either. And that's my president's report for today. I do have a question. Could you tell me the cost of the new ballots and the mailing? Final cost? I don't believe we received any more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, please, am I? Okay. Hello? I do not believe that we received the final invoice yet. Okay, thanks. How much was the last one? 
Off the top of my head, I believe it was you're correct. Miss Metcalf around 3,700 so for the be first set. Right? Excuse me. It will be that again. I believe so. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Carol is um, tied up at the office. She should be along, so we're going to hold her uh, report until she comes in. Uh, we don't have any unfinished business, and uh, we do have a new business, and we have a committee that would like to establish a safety traffic, a traffic safety committee. Uh, Tracy McCumber, she would like to chair that, and so I'm going to ask, uh, let me get to my, get to my part. Um, I'm going to read this. Um, there is concern in the community regarding traffic, speeding, and other safety issues. The Traffic Safety Committee would advise the board on how to deal with these issues effectively. I want to mention that we have um, Billy and uh, our team have been working on fixing all these signs that are here in the development that are not necessary or that are not correct. Uh, new signs have either have gone or are going out down at the front as you come in to tell everybody. The boulevard is 30 miles an hour. Side roads are 25 unless otherwise designated. We're Speed is strictly enforced, so we all need to adhere to that. So we've got those signs up. We've got a signs that are redundant and have been put there for some people's pleasure. So I'm going to finish. I want to tell you what we're doing out there and what Tracy and her group would like to continue to work uh, on the traffic safety. So I'm going to make a motion to establish a traffic safety committee for Brickbridge, consisting of five members. So um, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Uh, is it, hold is on, there any wait? It'll wait. Hold on. Yeah. It'll wait. Board first. I'd like a point of order or whatever. Uh, no, you, the point of order is okay. to go with the you know, uh, with the agenda. Um, I just have one question and then Tracy can come up. Um, this I have a motion um, to accept this new committee and a second. Now, is there any discussion? There you go. Um, when you talked about the signs, this is, I'm going to safely assume, the recommendations from the advisory committee that we had last year. The recommendations, we're going to follow through with that. Yeah. That's the recommendations. We're going to be working with that, and we have a lot of information. On your mic, please. Yeah. The new traffic safety will be working with the information that was gleaned and was and that uh, Steve Pisano and his advisory board worked on. Uh, I have a lot of data that I will be giving to the new team. Uh, and I think they're just going to advise. They're not making changes. They're just going to see what they can do to make it better. As the same as we have uh, the advisory board uh, keeping us up to date on what's going on out in the front where they're going to be redoing and we're going to have a development out there uh, with the traffic study and everything. Uh, so they are the workers that do the research that we as, a, we as a board don't always have time to do. So that's what our board is, our committees. Um, yes, to Gail, that will all be given to them. Yes. Are there any other questions? Yes, uh, Kenneth Moore, you know, so Mike. Check, 
Check. Kenneth Walls, Unit 4. I'd like to correct you on one thing to start with. Brook Ridge Boulevard is not 30 mile an hour from one end to the other. If you make a left on Brook Ridge Central, it is 25 mile an hour. And if you make a right, it is 30 mile an hour. And it's always been that way. Okay, and then one more thing. Why this late in your administration or you want to get a new committee together? I mean, you know. They asked me. Uh, a, uh, I know, but like I say, why this late? Because they came to me this late. That's, I'm sorry, Ken, they just came okay, to me. Okay, you got this advisory committee together. It was not put out to the people. It was not put out no. to the people where every all residents had a chance to apply. It's a board. Is it a secret service? No, it is not. It's, okay. a, it's a, a board of five to seven people. And now I got don't mean to cut you off. I know okay. I've got limited time here. But number one, an advisory committee. They've taken down the small square sign below the below your warning sign of curves on Brook Ridge Boulevard that dictated 20 mile an hour. This is a suggested speed to negotiate suggested, that curve. Correct. It's a suggested that's, speed. That's uh, these signs are missing. Okay, I will talk to this, Billy. You know, I will talk to Billy about it. He has been in I, charge I, of them. I, I, I won't get techie. That's okay. But yes, we've noticed some of the miles per hour signs taken down, and uh, thank you for doing that. Thank you. I, that's all I got right now. Okay, Ken. Thank you so much. Yes. <coughs> Bubble Brain, you get one. Um, I have to agree with the gentleman there. Um, I looked everywhere I could, and uh, I didn't see published anywhere who the people are, who are on this uh, advisory committee. How, how was it? Where, where it's established? What? It was, you know, the phone numbers, anybody have input in? Because I was wanting to know about the, the development up front of Mason to be carrying the ball on that. And I, I asked people, I found out who one of them was when we had the meeting the other day, the uh, gentleman, he was in that, the sort of, uh, for the development company. I heard he said he was on the, so I said, okay, one person is that about, but I was told there's five to seven people. There's nothing, I looked in the book and you're not. I certainly can um, uh, have an email put out and give you the names of the people that are on there. But that. Should, but they, 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 is there a committee that you if This those committee those was people? set up before I, I took office and it just continued on. I'm not making any excuses, but they do a lot of work here. Well, I know, but the thing is, <laughs> if, you, if I, you tell me they do a lot of work and I said, if I want the board to know something that I'm interested in bringing something to attention to the board, maybe I'd bring it to one of these people and say, could you guys maybe look at this? This might be something you've discussed before, you know, or whatever. He said, and I've just been here. But that's one of the things that I would, I would urge the board to publish the list of any committee that exists and the people who are on the committee so people would know, instead of just saying, the PAC told me this or whatever, you know, we have a... Okay, okay. that's not a problem. We'll be happy to do that for you. Is there a blind person that lives on country club? Because I've asked people about that blind person. Tracy, do you know? There used to be. My neighbor was blind, and she has dementia, and she passed. So we're going to address those things, sir, at the next meeting. Okay. And we have our traffic safety meeting. So there's a lot of things. But it's just that people wanted to know, because I, I kept looking for somebody that I could even uh, ask people who live around there, and they said they used to be, but I don't know if there's one now. It's a science that says. 
Okay, thank you, Bob. Any other discussion, Tom? Good morning. Um, this agenda topic is to a motion to establish a committee. The committee has not been formed yet, and we're asking for resumes. So this isn't a secret thing. It's just approval to establish a committee, and then notice will go out for resumes. And it, I would like to address the comment about the Thomas Franklin Unit 2, um, about the establishment of the first advisory committee was established under the previous president. So you need to look back in the records that far to find out the information that you need to know. And Tracy, I would like to go on there. Thank you. Is there any more discussion regarding establishing a traffic safety? And here comes Tracy. Come on up. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, oh, Tracy McCumber, Unit 2. Um, thank you for approving our new committee. Um, our mission. Our role is going to be evaluate our traffic needs in the community, obviously. We're going to review what um, the advisory board has done in the past, and we'll take that under advisement. Um, our mission will be to make our community safer than it is now. Our approach will be community um, think tanks. We're going to have town hall meetings where the whole community can talk and we can discuss what everyone thinks and what it's a group effort and I just think that the community needs to be involved. We all live here, we all drive here, so why not be all involved? Um, We're also going to address the much anticipated influx of traffic as our community grows. So it's going to be a big deal because our community will grow and grow and grow and we just need to address that as well. Um, and I just want to thank you very much and if anybody has any questions and I'd like to uh, address the question about this committee I, I approached Anna about doing this. I live on Country Club, right at the top of the hill when you come down to, go to the um, clubhouse. And the traffic is crazy there. I can't even get out of my driveway half the time. So it's been um, a passion of mine since I moved here. I came to one of the first meetings when I first moved here seven years ago. And my neighbor, the sign, she was blind. She would walk across the road with her, son, her grandson and these cars would be zooming. I said, I can't do this. I've got to go to a meeting. And we've got to do something about this meeting. I thought she'd get killed. So I went to the meeting and I said, I just wanted you guys to put it on the record that um, I think we need to do something about the speeding, that we need to address it. And that was seven years ago, six years ago. And um, so it's been a passion of mine since then. And I approached Anna and asked her if we could do something about this. So that's why. Start the committee. Tracy, I was on the board when when that lady was there, and we got the and we also put put the put the thing down. The speed limit down to 20, whereas 25. So people were going 30. People could not get out of their driveways. They couldn't get out of Cedar Cove or the top of Zim, uh, Dinsmore. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it's gotten a little bit better, but I think this committee we can take the time. And we can really do, we're going to research this. We're not going to be a committee that's going to go and spend money. It's going to be our own time, obviously. And we just want to try to do the best we can. We want to include the community so we have as much information to make it safer. And thank you again. Thank you. Do, oh, I have one more question. Are you sending out resume? Are we sending out resumes for this? Okay, you can come to the office and, and get a resume. Get a resume. Thank you. Fill out a resume. Fill out, fill out a resume. Get, get a resume, resume form. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. I, and I want to say that these committees work really, really hard and they work on their own time. 
and um, it, it's a good thing. They're very dedicated, and we should be very happy to have them. Uh, so, uh, can I have a show of hands if you're all in agreement to uh, go forward with the Traffic Safety Committee? Thank you. Motion carried. Okay. Okay, my next one is um, the AVRC uh, is down to four members now. So they needed more members. We had four people put their resumes in uh, who would like to be on the AVRC committee. And uh, so today I will tell you who they are. Paul Campbell, Paul. Thomas Raymond, Terry Johnson, and Bob O'Brien, okay? So when I met with the ABRC and I took these apps and all the resumes in, um, they said, we want them all. So therefore, I'm going to make a motion that we, that we approve all, all four applicants and um, for the ABRC. So I have a motion to appoint Paul Campbell, Thomas Raymond, Terry Johnson, and Robert O'Brien to the ABRC. May I have a second? You I'll have second. your second. Yeah. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. one uh, a member for the ACC so when he brings that member forward uh, he is going to swear all of you in at one time to make it more convenient so I'm going to turn this over to Ken Duncan good morning uh, the ACC has a current slot available we have one applicant his name is Ken Wells the ACC has asked and requested of this board and this membership to accept Ken Wall's appointment to the ACC, and I am making said motion to accept Ken Wall's to the ACC committee. I will second that. Do we have any discussion from the board? All in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. 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 Ken, welcome to the ACC. Can I get all the applicants up here so that I may swear at you and swear to you? <laughs> all right, will you all raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly promise and swear that you administer the office to which you have appointed to the best of your ability, judgment, conformity, and the governing documents of Brookridge Incorporated, that you will, with your acts, be governed by the principles of honesty, justice, fair play, in every manner possible endeavor to promote the safeguard interests of the citizens Brookridge and welfare on its members. Do you so swear? Yes. By the power, by the authority virtue appoint, proclaimed upon me, I, Ken Duncan, for precise president, do hereby declare you appointed to your appropriate committees. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your new committee members. Board of the director? No? Oh, you have more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ken. Go ahead. All right. Of all people, I normally remember to turn mine on. The ACC has made a request of this board. 
the ACC is requesting the, the app, ACC application that everybody fills out to modify or make changes to their property. And the revision sheets, all right, be permanently attached to the ACC guidelines. This will make it so, and I have spoke to the office and the administrative staff, make it so that everybody can see the ACC application. They can also see the revisions thereof, and it will become a permanent portion attached to their guidelines. There are currently only two people that can make changes to the ACC guidelines. One is the board, and the board has to go to the ACC and request them to evaluate it. And the other one is the ACC coming back to the board. With this, we're asking that those two documents, the ACC application and the revision sheet, be permanently attached to the ACC guidelines. May I have a second? You're making the motion. May I have a second to that? I'll second it. Thank you, Rosemary. Any discussion? Yes. So we don't have any revisions. All you want to do is make sure it's permanently attached. Okay. Chris says, I thought that you, that you had made a correction on one of these. We had made corrections on multiple sheets. The reason the ACC has gone through this is my understanding is approximately five years ago, a select group of people got together, rewrote the document. The document was not in compliance with the way the book was written. The ACC has spent the last six months going word by word and making sure that the two documents are identical. Now that we've completed that process, we want to atta permanently attach that document to the ACC guidelines. Thank you for the clarification. Is there any other discussion? If not, may I have, oh, George, do you have a question? George Clare, Unit 4. Were all the revisions yet, Ken, were they sent to the attorney for approval, prior approval? This was matched the word for word from the ACC guidelines. It was the making, how do I want to put this, making the book match the application. Or, yeah, okay, Paul, thank you. So, they, so we just, so in other words, all we've done is you made the corrections, the board has made the corrections, and nobody has to have prior approval from the attorney. That's all I, so yes and no. It's an in-house document. It's maintained by the board and the ACC. There's, it, it's still the rules, but the two documents did not match. So we corrected it, and we're asking it to be permanently attached. So any rules that are made between the ACC, the Rules and Regulations Committee, everything is in-house. Because this affects everybody. Yes, I mean, this was a cleanup of the document. It's not a change. It was a cleanup of the document. We had to make the two documents match each other. Otherwise, there was conflict, and that's what they have done. Okay. I think what George is referring to is that the, the rules and regulations, the, the, uh, the uh, revisions that they had made, uh, we gave them to you. It might be our point that he's asking a question. He's asking if the, if the rules and regulations of the ACC committee has been treated and, and should be done the same as rules and regulations of the rest of the 
uh, documents. That's I believe that's what his question is. I can come up and verify that if you want me to. Any further discussion? If not, can we uh, have a show of hands to accept the, the addition to the ACC book? Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Uh, Carol, did you have any uh, report to today? Did you read yours? Yes. Yeah, pretty much that everything was mentioned. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, we'll now have the report of the directors. Uh, Leo, let's start with you. Two observations. Is there anything in the works to fix the entryway over here? The main entryway into the clubhouse. Part, half of it is blocked off. The sidewalk. Is there anything in the works to fix it? It's been blocked off for a while now. Yes, we've been working with Billy to determine a, a way to get at the the sidewalk and to take it apart and look at it because it's it's all washed out underneath. But the problem is the benches that are there block our access. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with the, those benches, which are which appear to need to be replaced. So it's a it's it's a bunch of things that need to be addressed all at once. So we're trying to coordinate uh, with Billy because he has the equipment to do the work and. You know, we've got to tear it apart to take a look and see exactly how much work needs to be done and what is the best solution. Is it to reset the pavers? Is it to roll in a concrete walkway? And again, uh, all the compression joints have brought it out. All the wood out there is just basically all brought it out. So you're working on it? Yes, we're working on it. Okay. Thank you. The other point I would, I would like to make when comments are made at the end of the session, I strongly urge people to mail in their comment in writing. Submit it to the board. It would be addressed like any correspondence. The secretary would present it and you would see it. What that does it's a, it prevents a, forgive my Catholic upbringing, but it prevents a litany of questions that prolongs the meeting. And most of what is presented has been pre presented time and time again. We need to change what we do as a board and the membership attending the board. If we present our case, correctly in writing to the board. We should, as a board, address it. We don't necessarily have to respond back other than saying we don't approve of this and we're moving on. And in the next month you don't present it again because we said no the month before. So the membership needs to change and the board needs to advise and that should correct our problems every month. Thank you, Leo. Ken? I have nothing there. Gail? <laughs> okay, first, uh, first, thank you. Uh, beautification committee, uh, members of the committee have gone through all of the plants, uh, especially in the front and in front of the, um, in front of the administration office. Uh, to assess when we had that deep frost, it uh, killed a couple of our plants, probably about 20 of them. So uh, we're going to be working to replace those 
so that it all comes back. And uh, the Unification Committee is having a card, a card party. Yes, in I in March, and which will they it usually gives us a good return. So I'm hoping that people will, as we talk about it more, that you'll support it. The other thing is the unit reps; they're working hard, uh, but we have two openings now. I think we have two openings. Yeah, we have two openings. Uh, so we'll be accepting resumes for that. That the forms you can get at the front office. Okay, is that bad? Yeah, that is bad. Uh, so that's. I have a couple of other things. I know Leo addressed the unfinished business. Uh, well, he had, uh, he addressed the questions, and usually unfinished business should be the answers to the questions from the previous meeting. Uh, they used to be, all questions used to be taken down and were addressed within a couple of days and we would discuss them as, as unfinished business. So I'm hoping that the board will think about changing your unfinished business from nothing to answering questions from the previous meetings. And I think that that will help a lot with the member comments at the end of the evening. Uh, another thing that I've noticed is that we are down a full-time employee three, since th for three years since Betty Hine retired. Uh, she did all the new resident meetings. She handled the RV compound. She kept new homeowners and records, residents' records up to date, assisted the front desk and so on, and I'm strongly advising that we look at a new but at least a part-time, if not a full-time employee, and then the other employees can do what they've been hired for. Uh, I also, we were told that the advisory committee would be uh, updating us as to, regarding the new plaza that may affect Berkridge Bo uh, Boulevard, uh, and it was the 9th of this month, or January, January, and I haven't seen a report yet, so I'd really like to know what is happening with that. Um, let me see. Also, I still, I requested at least three times the names of the members of the advisory board, not the new traffic study board, but the advisory committee board. And I was told that that is a private board for the for the event for the office and um, I just think that we've never had a private board that people don't know who the who the people are on the board I know that Tracy is very open and Steve Pisano but I don't know who the others are thank you can I answer two of your questions yes. Um, one is you talk about uh, full time work down a full time employee. We have been uh, looking to uh, get a part time employee coming in, and uh, that is in the works. Uh, Carol's been working on that. Uh, part of the problem here is we don't pay enough to get people to come here to work full time. And that's one of our issues. We have, uh, and I don't know if Carol wants to answer this. You. -hoo. Hi. Yes, I am looking into hiring a part time person. Okay. The thing is, is that what, I, what I'm doing is I went to the high Central High School to look for someone after school. That's where I started. I talked with Commander Commander Cruz over there at the school and the guidance counselor. And then if that doesn't work, then I'll take another avenue, but that's where I'd like to start. Because uh, you can get a high school student cheaper than you can get an adult. Okay, Carol, thank you. Um, it's just that the board is not aware of that. Um, the, uh, your other question about your advisory board names, I think I mentioned that earlier, that I will be putting that out to everybody. So as Leo said, that might have been a redundant question. Rosemary, do you have anything to say? 
Yes, I do. To remind our residents that this coming Saturday is the We Love Our Veterans Tea sponsored by the ladies of Brookridge. It's from 2.30 to 4.30. And we're going to have a, a Chinese auction, share the wealth. We have an entertainer coming in. And the um, Central High School RFTC will be our escort and service for that day. As of yesterday morning, we had 100 reservations. Today is the last day that you can make a reservation, a resident and your guest, if you have a guest. So contact Patrona or Sandy Hoos, and if you want to come. Like I said, it's 2.30, 4.30 this coming Saturday. We hope to see you all there. We have one special thing coming in with our speakers, with our regular speakers. We have the Canine Partners um, for Veterans, and uh, we have been informed that a gentleman who has just returned from the honor flight in Washington, D.C., will come and speak to us about the purpose of that honor flight. So we're looking forward to him. The other thing I want to remind people of, and because I don't see anybody here from Helping Hands, Helping Hands is having their annual fundraising pancake breakfast Sunday morning, and the cost is six dollars per person. And that money goes to pay for their supplies when they uh, stitch things for the hospice and the hospitals. So please come. Nice pancake breakfast. It's always been delicious. So it's Sunday morning, six dollars per person. Thank you, Ruth. Okay, do we have any member comments or concerns? <coughs> Mary? Mary Sawyer, Story Unit 6. Carol, did you ever consider putting it out to residents who might want a part-time position at the office? Um, we am sure we have capable people working here, and the guardhouse gets minimum wage. There might be somebody interested here that could use the money and possibly be able to fill the position. I'll take it under consideration. Thank you. And uh, correct me, did you say the audit is complete and available for us? Okay, so I put a request in on the 27th of January. Can I stop down today and get my copy of the audit? Later in the afternoon, I have to make a copy. Okay. Um, I'd like some clarification about the terms to be served for the election. I'm still trying to understand why only two people are getting three years. There are four, pe four openings, three of which are being filled by directors who their terms have expired. We have... Just give me... Hold on a second. The only one that's term is not expired, that is coming off. Gail is coming off. Rosemary's coming off. Lyle, when he was put on after last year's election, was given a one-year <coughs> term. He expires this March. The only one that's not expiring is Jerry Foster, who goes on there because he has one year to complete yet. Our bylaws strictly state that once a term has been expired, the new director gets three years. So why are only two of our directors getting three years and the other two just getting a simple year? As I explained before, this got mixed up. The orders got mixed up in 2020. We're trying to straighten it out. Every time somebody resigns or quits, it messes up the order. I've already explained. I've been through this with the attorney. And yes, Mary, I'm going to take it under advisement from my attorney how the terms are going to be ran. But there was no mix-up. You had two people. You had Larry Hoos that came off after one year in 22, and Val Stratton came after one year. The only opening that was left in 22 was when Larry Hoos resigned in February. Okay, and I think it's very unfair to the current candidates coming in that they're not receiving the same courtesy that our candidates received last year and all given three years. And I really think it's very unfair that we don't have the opportunity to see what the attorney said to us, considering the residents put that bill. Thank you. Mary, if, I'll, I'll clarify. 
Okay. The reason why we do this is that, and and I had spoken with the attorney when I was on the board um, through through the president that <clears throat> says you have to have it will always be three two two, and then and then it'll be three three two or three three one. We have two. We have two or three. We have three with two year terms right now. Okay, they cut that. There'll be two years. There'll be one year they've already done. So they get two. They get two years. Three deal that again three years. Well, okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have three. We have three board members right now. That will be down to two board members. So we will have three members that have two years. Okay. So we're going to have. We have. So we will have two. Yeah, we're supposed to have three, three, two, two. Okay, we'll have two with one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and three. Three with two years and two with three years. It should never be three, three, one because you have to have consistency on, on the board. It got, it got messed up. This is the reason why. It got messed up four years ago or five years ago when the president, four years ago, when the president insisted on mixing his own instead of listening to the attorney. It, in the past, before four years ago, it was always, there was always three people that have three years, two people with two years, two people with one year. And then when it rotated, it would be, that's how they would have three, and then one, and then two. They would, so you always never had more than three, <coughs> Uh, three people on the same term at the same time, except for three years. I know it's difficult, but I can go over that with you privately to show you how that's done. It just doesn't, you know, it, last year the attorney stood up and said, and I'll buy a say, when, when they expire their term, they get three years. That's what they gave them last year. So we're doing expiring terms now. Why aren't they getting the three years? That's my only question. When somebody, when somebody leaves the when somebody leaves the board, there's a one-year term until if that's what if that's what their term would have been, and that's what Lyle would have, that's what Lyle fills in the one-year term, okay, and he, that's expiring, so it should go from there with replacing him with the three-year. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else today? Linda. Linda Wallace, Unit 4. So the audit is open for the residents to pick up? Okay. And in regards to the ballots that were mailed out, the ones with the mistakes on it, who was responsible for that? Okay. Well, Somebody needs to do some proofreading before they send things out. That was proved three times. I do not know what happened. I do not have a reason or an explanation other than maybe I didn't save it before I printed it. I don't know. But everything was proved three times before it went out. Okay. Uh, and I noticed in the new ones that uh, Debbie Coble. On her resume, she's got Debbie Coble Higgins, and that's still just Debbie Coble. We went by the property appraiser, and it's only Debbie Coble. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Hold the mic up. Hello? Okay. Um, we had uh, requests go out for people uh, who wanted to be on the board, and four people put their name forward for three positions. 
those those people were certified for that. And then after that happened, uh, one of our board members resigned. Now, according to the bylaws that I read, the, 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 can appoint, the board can appoint somebody for the rest of his term until the next general election, which could be interpreted to be this next general election, but that position has to be advertised as open to give people an opportunity to run for that position, because that position is way different from the positions that were open in uh, beginning in September. New items came up, people's minds could be changed whether they wanted to run or not, but instead, I've heard that no matter what happens, the four people who put their names in as an economy measure, we're going to and not follow the rules, so as an economy measure, we're going to just put the four people in and uh, based on the regular rules. And, and, and I don't think, that, I think you're going to sell up to the same sort of problem you had with this, how many people we have uh, running for three years, two years, and one year. I don't see how that ever happened. Because it's just like when the Congress of the United States said senators, one third of the senators are elected every three, uh, every other term. So you have one third of the Senate is up at every time. Same thing with the board. So you have continuity in the Senate, continuity on the board. But when you when you take people and you, you say that you're going to uh, have these nominations according to the rules, you have to look at the rules. And the rules say that you, know, you can't give that position away. That position has to be reapplied. It's like if the president resigns, all right, you're going to put a new president in, and you're not going to just appoint somebody right away. You know, and, and that's the problem is that in the room, people say we did this for an economy reason or to save money or do this, but the rules clearly state that after a person resigns, the next general election he should stand for it. Yes, I said, that, and I said about this to the president, I said, you could advertise that position as soon as he did, had a short time for people to apply for that position, and still put it on this ballot for that position alone. And people would be running for that position alone, and the other three or four people could be running for the three position. But that's what the rules say. And it, I just I just have to bring that to people's attention that that you know that one director uh, who resigned three months later, the issues changed. We had arguments over the budget, we had arguments over the how uh, much the management company. So there's a different perspective than when the first people were thrown. I think people should get a, a fresh look. And maybe more people, the only thing you could have is maybe more people become involved in here rather than shutting off to the people that already volunteered. Thank you, Bob. Is there anyone else? Mary? Mary Story Unit 6. I'm hoping either you, Anna, or Carol can answer this question. So, running a profit and loss statement for the month of May, run in June, the net income balance was that we were $23,000 in the red. Same report, run six months later in December of this year, suddenly shows we're $15,000 in the black. How can two identical reports show such vastly different numbers? I don't know that off the top of my head. Sorry. Okay. Um, I gave you the stuff there. Can you at least say to me you're going to look at it and report back to us all the residents at the next meeting to explain why there is such a difference? I'm not asking for an answer. The simple reply would be, We'll get back to you, but I would like it to be getting back to us when all the residents are present at a meeting. Okay? Thanks. Thank you, Mary. Is there anyone else? Okay. If there is any other discussion or anything, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? I second that motion. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Okay. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Have a good day.